the next type of foot I'm going to be going over foot paws foot paws something is canine canine feet are quite similar to feline feet but they're not quite the same canid feet also can start with the rounded triangle rectangle thing because they also have toes but their proportions are quite different whereas feline feet tend to all be one um one width up to where the ankle joins the rest of the leg canine feet tend to get thinner around the ankle and continue to be thinner than feline feet um the entire way through the prevalence of their thumb is also quite different they have a lot smaller dew claws the dew claws are less likely to be used is one reason why it's smaller that toe is way too big yeah. Canine toes are also more triangular than feline toes. They tend to be skinnier on top by a, a ginormous degree. Whereas feline toes tend to be more rounded. One other large difference is canine toes, their nails do not retract. If you ever see a wolf that has retractable claws, it is not a wolf. It is a lie. Or an abomination. Now, these are quite easy for me because I own dogs, so I see this all the time. I say as I screw up the dewclaw. The, the dewclaw tends to be quite small and curved for some reason. Not quite sure why, but it does. For a side view, much the same, much the same follows. They also have the triangle shape, but it's a lot skinnier. Like, imagine cat stretched. You have a dog. Essentially. The paw pad. Skinny, skinny, skinny. Never forget the nails, because it doesn't look right without the nails. Their nails, their nails stick out more than a lot of people think they do. Rather than curving down against the toe, like a lot of people draw, the dog toes and their nails. See, that's just, 
that's just not effective to use as a scratching tool, which is what they're there for. That's, that's not effective as a, as a scratcher. The dog toes stick out quite a lot. They tend to be a little blunted on the ends because they're always dragging on the ground. And catching on wood and dirt and rocks and shit. They also have a sheath just like cats. And they tend to be a lot straighter than cats. They do have a curve, but it's not a, sh a, a sickle curve. Now depending on what kind of dog it is, they could have the fluff attached. Long furry toes. But for the sake of anatomy, I'm not going to be doing a long haired dog right now. Rather, we will stick to a short-haired dog. There you go. Now, if you do have a dog that is not being cared for, their toenails will start to curl. Especially in the dew claw which doesn't touch the ground so it isn't worn down it'll start to curl on itself and become quite sharp now the front the front toes if you see them and they're overgrown rather than curling like that they'll start instead of being straight They'll start to thin out and bend. That looks quite painful on the dog. It looks quite painful and I can imagine walking on that would be quite painful as well. That is one thing that I've never had to see a cat deal with because they're their claws, they don't really overgrow. Dogs, if they are indoors or stuck where they can't uh, wear down their claws naturally, they will curl or they'll bend or they'll break. It's not a good time. It's not a good time for anybody. Dog paw toes. Not paw toes, paw pads. There we go. Saying the right word. Are quite similar to cat paw pads. Whereas they are arranged in a matrix like this. Rather than being straight across. The only difference is the size and shape is dog paw toes tend to be quite skinny as their feet are whereas cats are fatter the dogs also tend to walk closer to the tips of their toes rather than the entire foot. They will use the leverage of their toes for running. And you can see that in any dog tracks you ever see. You will always see the nail marks on a dog uh, paw print. Because they hang down.
back foot is not that different. The toes are still skinny and tall. Though in the back feet, it's easier to see the tendons of the toes because there is a lot more tension in the back feet, especially of running dogs. Like, one of my dogs is part Italian Greyhound. He is very spring-loaded. He has very long... very long feet. Long skinny feet. I made it too long. Whoopsie. And this is why we have erasers. Erasers are wonderful. One thing to remember about the claws of most animals, rather than being straight down, they tend to angle in. Now if the nails are overgrown, they can angle out, which again looks very painful to walk on. Just not, not a good time. No, not a good time. 